Hey everybody, this is B-Word of the Bleach Brothers Podcast. Before we get into today's episode, I want to bring your attention to our link tree. Please visit linktree slash Bleach Bros Podcast for the links to all of our socials, streaming sites, and merch. Linktree is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash Bleach Bros Podcast, all one word. If you enjoy our content, make sure to give us a like and give us a review on whatever platform you're listening to us on. Also, invite your friends. And with that, let's get started with the show. You're listening to the Bleach Brothers Podcast, hosted by B-Word and Jake. Welcome into the Bleach Brothers podcast. Uh, this is B Word and my trusty good fellow co-host Jake the Hater uh, decided to be a little bit naughty this year. I don't know if if Santa's going to be able to afford the coal for him, but uh, that's what he's getting in his in his stocking, from what I hear. Uh, Jake, what do you have to say about that? Didn't they shut down all the pebble and like all those mining projects with the new EPA regulations? I don't think that they have. I think that they're still open. Just shut up. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> I hate everything about you. I hate everything you're doing right now. Go drive a Tesla and suck it. Um, I don't want to drive a Tesla for for many reasons. Um, probably because I can't afford it, because the podcast isn't paying us anything, because you're on it. I don't think you'd fit in one. You're correct. Would you fit in a Tesla? No. If you were, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be rude, but would you fit in a Tesla? I actually have a really fast story. So so um, the uh, the Mini Coopers, or I'm sorry, yeah, the Mini Coopers, I actually had to rent one going down to Vegas one time, and I got pulled over going out of Tonopah. And the cop actually asked me how I was going that fast. And when I when I got out of the car to show him the three cylinder engine, he asked how I got in. I said I had to pay him the doors. It was pretty great. He he let me off. It was I a good. You, it was, you it know what I love stuff. about you, Beaver? Too you you have no shame. You know about no. yourself, which is great. No, I don't. I don't. But uh, Jake, we actually have a guest again this week. Uh, you want to go ahead and introduce him? Yeah, this is a, a good friend of mine. I, I will say good friend, and when he comes on, he can he can mention how him, he feels himself about me and then being on the show. Uh, but Brandon Sprague, um, a a person that works up in the Portland uh, sports market on um, the 1080 The Fan. I've been a big fan of his show, Dirt and Sprague. You guys should check him out. If you don't, they are on Audacity. Uh, but Brandon Sprague, thank you for coming on. We're going to talk some basketball. We're going to talk a lot of things. How you doing tonight, buddy? Uh, you guys sound like... You're right up my alley. I love the stories already. It's good to be on with the podcast with you guys. It's one of my favorite podcast names in the entire world. So uh, I'm honored that you guys invited me. Thanks for having me, man. What's going on? We're just doing the damn thing, dude. This is it. We're excited to have you on. As a matter of fact, I uh, I was telling Jake when when I was you know trying to put some things together, um, you know I went ahead and saw your Twitter. You you are officially the first blue check we have on. So for that, uh, I will go ahead and clap for you. You're probably not going to hear it because my microphone. But thank you again for coming on. I think this is going to be a fun episode for sure. That blue check thing is uh, it's pretty douchey. I got to admit it is. Uh, it's one of those like I was at work and some. Uh, a production promo person came over and was like, Hey, we got an email. They're offering radio stations, blue check marks. Do you want one? And I was like, I guess. And then two days later, I just had it. And someone was like, Whoa, you got a check. And I'm like, it's so stupid. The fact that I have a check that it, it means absolutely nothing that they gave it to me. So I'm a big fan of you and your co-host dirt. You know that, um, who was more, I mean, you just mentioned how you felt about the blue check. How did he feel about a blue check? He felt like a celebrity. He he felt like, you know what I mean? He was like, oh, I'm going to go to the local Selwood bar and I'm going to give autographs out now. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't think anybody's going to recognize you, but sure. So he went from 5'3 to 5'4 is what you're saying? Uh, I would say he went from 5'3 to 5'6. Like it really <laughs> elevated the aura of who he is. Like it took him a, a couple inches up for sure. See, and I, I was going to say, I got nervous for a second when uh, you said you love our name because we're doing the name reveal coming in next year. 
And I just didn't want to spill the beans already, Beaver. So I was really trying to be quiet and I was waiting for you to jump in and say something. And then you just sat there silent too. So you ruined you ruined the moment right there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't want to spill the beans on what the name is because uh we're doing that the very first episode of twenty two. I think you guys just hit the timing with the name perfectly. I mean, we're just coming off of bleach potentially being a cure for COVID. I think you guys are just tapping into the market at the right time. Oh, it all works out. That's how that's how things work out usually in the world, right? No, because I, I love the sign behind you. It's uh, it sort of reminds me of around the horn. Don't be a bitch, Sprague. I'm a big yep. fan of that. I, I know. Yep. The, notice the I is gone, but you know, there's no I in team and there's no I in bitch apparently. <laughs> Exactly. It ah. makes you fill in the blank, man. And if anything I hear the most from radio listeners, it's usually like, hey, Sprague, stop being a bitch. <laughs> so you might as well just, I might as well own it, right? Hey, always. So, so Sprague, um, what, what got you into following basketball? And more importantly, um, what kind of got you into the industry as far as reporting on basketball and, of course, the local sports market there in Portland? Um, you know, basketball is really just... I think like almost anybody else that loves any sport, it was, you starts when you're a kid and you play it a lot and you make a bunch of friends. And then as life goes on, a lot of people fall out of sports. I just kept loving it more and more. And then, you know, by the time I'd say I was 14 or 15, I had dreams of playing, but like I knew I looked in the mirror, I saw a six foot white guy and that wasn't going to go very far. So I, I kind of had to pivot and sports radio was something I didn't really know much about, but when I turned it on, you had somebody like Colin Coward from Portland doing a show and he ended up blowing up. And I was like, this is really cool. This dude gets to get paid to talk about sports all day. So went to Oregon state had no idea what I wanted to major kind of just went to college because it was like, well, everybody's going to college. And somebody told me about the campus radio station and my freshman year, I just went over there and asked a lot of questions, annoyed people. And eventually they just let me be a part of that weird kind of indie rock uh, nondescript video game show playing culture. And I did my own sports radio show in between all of those different genres and kind of talk shows. And then from there, it really was kind of luck. Like people don't believe me when I say this, but as much as you might put into something, it, it does take like a little luck. And it was just happened to meet the right person at the right time. That led to the first job. The second job kind of came from the first job because, again, you meet people at the right time. So, you know, it's it's nothing that I did, really. It's just I, I love it. I have a passion for it. And I was lucky enough to meet the right people at the right time. And here we are. Yeah. So you brought up a few good points. One, basketball, you knew you were a six foot white guy because I always equate basketball to like bad sex. Only the last two minutes matter and black guys are better at it than me. Yes, yes, yes. Um. <laughs> I disagree. I, I disagree. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to push back on that last two minutes thing, but uh, there is no doubt the, the black guy better than us. Yes, absolutely. Does the two minutes include a shower? Well, no. Shower sex is the worst, dude. Hold on. Do you want to get on that tangent real quick? No. Shower, shower sex is terrible. I, I, I know it's terrible. I'm just asking, like, does your two minutes actually include the shower as well? Because how you're able to get to two minutes is beyond me. Yeah. Oh, dude, baby oil is a helpful, helpful tool. Ba baby oil is a game changer. Baby oil is a game changer. It gets hurt in two minutes. I am, I'm doing my own thing over there. Like I said, I'm trying to play basketball, and I'm fucking failing at it. <laughs> no, the, the next point was, though is when you were saying, you know, you, you annoyed enough people and luck was involved. We are hoping that luck is involved to get us there because we know we're annoying the shit out of people and we're just <laughs> hoping to grow there. Um, but I, I, I know the story when you guys started out with, uh, when it was originally Danforth, Dirt and Sprague, from what I know, mm -hmm. uh, when I became a fan of you guys. And, and tell me if I'm wrong here. Was it true that you guys were doing like a podcast late at night on your own and you got caught by the guys at the studio? Yeah, okay, so first of all, let me just interject here with this. Uh, any sex is, is not overrated. Like, shower sex might not be your favorite. It's not overrated because sex is sex. Okay, can we agree on that? <laughs> well, I, I guess it's like pizza. You know, when it's good, it's good. And when right. it's bad, it's still pretty good, right? Absolutely. Okay. It's still pizza. Okay. So um, I worked at the radio station. I was working, I think, maybe 12 hours a week. I was making $7.33 an hour. Like, I was doing nothing, but I thought – this is my window. I'll give this a year. We'll see where it goes. And maybe I'll have to get like a different job. I one night was walking in the studio really late and I saw uh, one of them. They were there working. And I was like, oh, what are you doing here? And then the other one came up and he kind of gave me an awkward look. And I really know these guys. You know, I kind of knew them a little bit, but not much. 
And they were really coy with why they were there. They're like, oh, you know, we're doing this and that. And I was like, oh, okay. So I ended up leaving. The next day I worked, they came in again. And I was like, you guys aren't randomly in here. You're not supposed to be working. It's 730 at night. Like, why are you here? And they reluctantly told me what they were doing. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Could I join? And it's much like what I said before. It's like kind of annoying people and just putting yourself out there. And look, sometimes you get rejected. That's what life is about. But I just thought, oh, I'm not doing anything right now. I'm airing a Mariner game. I'm bored as hell. Like, let me get on. So we did a podcast. We had a lot of fun. We did like a, I don't know, an hour and a half. And we kind of just walked away. It was like, you know, that went really well. Let's just, let's just do this for fun and part time. And we did it enough where we ended up showing it to our boss and, you know, things kind of just, again, lined up. It's all weird how the universe works sometimes. Like, we had no business doing anything more than a podcast. But I would say two months after we started that podcast, uh, a client at Buffalo Wild Wings just happened to say, hey, we want to be involved with the radio station, but we want to be involved heavy. What can we do? And it, it just, it's really weird how it lined up. The The sales rep was basically like, what if we created a night show for you guys? And they were like, we would love that idea. And our boss knew we were doing the podcast. He didn't have anybody else in the building. And he basically was like, would you guys like to do this? And we're like, hell yeah, we'd like to do a show at night. And, you know, the rest went on from there. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm going to say I don't agree with luck as much as you do, Spray, because I've annoyed some of the same people you work with. And I am apparently not annoying enough. <laughs> But uh, it's about timing. I, I, That's part of life. Yeah. I just <laughs> let me let me let me interject there. When you say that you're not annoying, you are annoying as fuck. And so the fact that you are not annoying the right people is probably the issue because you're annoying the shit out of me, my man. Oh God! You know I don't know why we have a show together, but whatever. B word. Maybe you need to be. Maybe you need to be more talented at being annoying. You know what I mean? Like maybe oh. there's levels of annoyance. <laughs> oh. You know I invited this guest. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> no. So it brings me to the next thing though, because um, you you also are doing a, another podcast besides the show right now called Jack Ramsey's. Yeah. With Danny Meringue. and how's that going? And how'd that get started? Oh, dude, um, it's going really well. You know, we we've gotten a lot of support, and and that's really cool. Cause the Blazers are absolute dog shit. So the fact that anybody's even listening to anything about the Blazers is remarkable to me. Uh, it, it, I don't know. It's pretty simple. I, I really had a thing in my mind this year where I was like, I love the NBA. I love the Blazers. Like I want to do something. I know what that was. And I was honestly going to kick around doing my own podcast. And then I knew Danny just through the media and we got along pretty well. We text a lot about different storylines going on in the league. And one day randomly in the, June, July time, he basically was like, Hey dude, I'm, I'm thinking about starting this podcast. Do you have any interest? And I, you know, I took like a day and thought about it cause I knew it'd be a pretty big time commitment, but I was like, fuck yeah, let, let's just do it. Let's just get into it and see where it goes. And you know, we're a couple months in, but things are going really well. And, um, you know, without Danny kind of bringing it up, I, I'd probably be doing my own, but I don't know where that would be right now. So it just kind of happened to work out that way. Nice. Well, you mentioned you mentioned a good point um, that, you know, Portland is dog shit. We all know that if you're if you're from the area and you pay attention to them. What what do you think would be different if you were in a bigger market? Let's say because I, I, I and I and tell me if I'm wrong here, but Portland seems like a smaller market for basketball. I mean, it's been proven how they can't host an all star game due to parameters of like hotels and all that. And, you know, the, the rigmarole that goes with that. But do you think that uh, the podcast would be going differently if you didn't have a fan base that was so like rabid about it? Because they don't. It seems like they don't care if it's dog shit. They they just all want Blazers all the time. Like if you were dealing with a Laker team and they were shit, they might just either jump like they usually do and go be Laker or Clippers fans for a minute, or would they even fucking care? Yeah. So that's. I think that's a good question. I think Portland is a very unique city and market in that regard. Like. Like the Timbers, for example, we're recording this on a on a Tuesday night, but like the Timbers are playing their championship match at home this weekend, right? And there's going to be a full stadium and it'll be news if they win. But if you really to compare the two popularity wise, like it's not to me, it's not really a contest. Like when the Blazers are good, nobody can compete with them anywhere. And so I just I think it's a unique market in the sense of the fans will always care about their very first pro sports team. Like it's your first kid. And, you know, there's always something about the first kid for a lot of people. I, I don't know how good it would be in a different city. I'll, I'll push back just a, a little bit on what you said there. I, I think the Laker fans, they're psychotic. 
they're entitled, they're pompous, they're absolute bitches sometimes, but they give a damn. So I, I do think a Laker podcast would be good. It just really is market to market. Miami, I think, would be very hit and miss because it's Miami. They got sexy things to do. Minnesota wouldn't give a shit because they don't care about their team. Um, yeah, just it's market to market. And big market, little market to me is not so much important. It's more about how how rapid is the fan base. Like the Knicks have been terrible for a decade. Those fans care about everything. The Nets are finally championship contenders. Their fans don't exist. So it really just depends on what city you're doing it and more so what your market size is. Yeah, I, I can kind of speak to that too because I'm a you know, I grew up being a Dallas Cowboys fan and I actually listen to Dallas Dallas area radio. Um, just because I want news as soon as I can get it. Um, and they've been shit for what, 30 years now, boys? Is, is, is that is that what I'm I, is that the scar? Is that my cross that I'm bearing right now? So so when things are good, they're good. When things are bad, I'm still there. Um, it's just mm -hmm. it, so I, I do kind of see that small market versus little market. However, Sprague, I do kind of want to ask you from a player's perspective. Um, I hear a lot that, you know, like the Mavericks, they have a hard time trying to attract talent to uh, compliment Luca. And, you know, you've got Dame in Portland, and it seems like it's kind of a, a, a similar market where people just don't want to live in Portland. They don't want to play in Portland as far as from a player perspective. Can you kind of talk on that for a second? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot that goes into where players want to live. Like players are about glamour, players about popularity and where they're going to go to get the most kind of exposure. The Dallas one is weird to me because say what you want. Like I, you're gonna not like this, but I, I fucking hate the Dallas Cowboys. Like if I could, so do I. <laughs> if I could burn that star, I absolutely would. If I hear Al Michaels tell me that that's America's team one more time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn this bitch to the ground. I am so tired of hearing that. But that being said, they, they're still always relevant, whether they're good or bad. To, it doesn't matter. Like people give a shit. The Mavericks are interesting because they're not really that popular there. In fact, when you go check their TV ratings, they have a lot of nights where they're outrated by the Texas Rangers. And the Texas Rangers boys have been awful. Oh, so yeah. I think it's a bad combination of a city that doesn't truly care as much as other basketball cities. Because I, I don't know what else it would be. There's no state tax. Dallas has actually got some really beautiful suburbs. It's pretty cheap to live there. Like, it doesn't add up why people wouldn't want to live and play with the Mavericks, especially with Luca there. Whereas like if you live in Portland, they face a similar thing. And, and we can talk about this or we could just let it go. Like the fact is Portland is a very white state and that doesn't always make every black athlete feel the most comfortable. You add the tax rate into this, into this bitch where it's like 10%, it's some crazy number and you're losing millions of dollars to stay here and play here whereas you could go to florida you go to texas you know, you go to these these different places that don't have state income tax and they're keeping all of that money so I, I think it's kind of a combination and you know the weather has changed but largely it's still known as a rainy city like most of these dudes don't want to stay in a city that rains this much well that was gonna be one of my arguments that i've always said like if you could even just for college athletes or whatever when i've argued against the teams up here is if you can go somewhere where it's sunny, the women are hot because, you know, no offense, I'm going to say it. The women up here are just like the organic vegetables. You don't know if they're furry. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know how they're grown. And as my brother said, it's like finding Bigfoot. You got to have a trank gun to show the hot one off. You got to shoot her and show it to your friends because nobody's going to fucking believe you. But the point is you could have hot women, good weather, tax free, yeah. less rain. Where are you going to fucking live? Are you going to live in Portland right. where your taxes are astronomical? You can you might be a dame in a century because I mean, it is a, it is literally a dame a dozen you have one guy who's been the name and the face of the team and that's it you got cj mccollin who's stefan you know cj 2.0 and you you've seen me on the twitter before sprague i think he's dame 2.0 we don't need both of them on the team yep but why there is no reason for people to come to this city, and I, I hate that because i'm i'm from here i would like to see the team win i would like to see more happen but i understand why the second thing I'm happy you did, though, is shit on the Cowboys, because I love that this is a basketball episode and B word had to try to fucking fit in football in his own team because he can't even talk about a fucking basketball team. Because B word, who is your basketball team, by the way, while we're on so, the subject? So I was a uh, Fairweather fan growing up and uh, I followed 
so Jake, when you and I were growing up, the the Bulls were it. So I followed every oh, single Bulls you game. Suck. You suck. Oh. You suck. Yeah. Oh, no. my oh my god. god. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so holy oh, I was, shit, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you basically said, "Can I put up the championships from two teams with my two hands?" Those are my favorite teams. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I, I will. I will say this, Sprague, in his defense, and you know we've talked about this before because where I come from, Las Vegas, you don't have. Well, we used to not have teams, and so you sort of pick, and you always go by the money line, right? Because you Sprague the line, yeah. I'll admit it. You you have it, you know, and you you bet. The problem is B word always went with the guaranteed winner. He's going for the <laughs> the you know the the guaranteed. I'll bet fifty dollars to win five. Yeah, you know, he's going on the, the minus yeah. five fifty favorite on the money line. He's like, I'm going to bet ten dollars and I'm going to win a dollar. Hey, it's like, cool. he's a Mayweather about, fan, dude, not a Fairweather fan. It's not about <laughs> how much you win. It's about the fact that you win. And when I yeah, can't win championships, I, if I can win a money line, even if I'm losing money, then I'm all about that life. So, are you B word? Are you one of those sick son of a bitches that bets a hundred? dollars on alabama minus a thousand to beat cincinnati and you're like i'm good at gambling no because anybody who roots for alabama is just a terrible roll gamer. tide well I was... fuck you roll tide <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have we have a dallas cowboy fan and we have the dallas cowboys of college football like it doesn't get any worse than this i i, w- I would agree with you there I would agree with you there. Can so, I? Can I? I want to add one thing real quick on the on the market thing. Like Portland does not attract stars. We know this; it's well documented. I think it's important to highlight though. Like winning really is the end all, cure all thing for this, right? Like when I when we were growing up, tell me guys, was Golden State relevant in the NBA? No, no. Was anybody flocking to Golden State? If I remember no. correctly, Chris Webber was like, "Get me the hell out of here." He'd rather play in Sacramento. Now it's like the destination. It's sexy. It's flash. It's substance. Winning really is the thing that that attracts people to want to play for your team. So if the Blazers can somehow get their head out of the you know what, maybe at some point down the road they'll get somebody to play with Dame. The word was ass, and we are ass men, so you can say it uh, too. That's when the Golden State actually had the logo with the um, the warrior that was holding a lightning bolt. The lightning bolt guy, yeah, yeah. Yep. Hey, be, be uh, careful, no, though, Jake. I, I agree with you that winnings. What's Sorry, up? Be careful, though, because if you start talking about previous logos, no Golden State Warrior fan's going to understand what you're talking about right now. I know, I know. That's why I was bringing it up so they can actually look up their history. Uh, but no, I, I agree with you that that winning is everything, and I think that's one reason I sort of fell out of basketball. If I'm going to be upfront, I, I loved the physicality of the game. I loved the Lambier era. I liked um, how you didn't have to. I, I one I call the first part that made me fall out of basketball was the Allen Iverson era, mm-hmm. where you could have a guy score 40 points and they can still lose that night where it was about one guy, and then it turned into, instead of about one guy, it turned into three guys, and then it turned into, hey, let's make a fantasy team, and then, hey, let's, what do, all we need to do is get rings, and that's all that matters, and you have the same teams over and over again. It's almost like the, and I'm not trying to bring football back into it, but I'll help B-word out with this, uh, the Patriots in, in in football compared to basketball, where all you have is the same teams going over and over again, depending on where the players go. Like LeBron, wherever he goes, most likely they're almost going to make the championship mm-hmm. due to who he brings with them. And that's what I think made a lot of people fight out of basketball too is we lost a lot of the game we lost a lot of the physicality and how actually the game is played and it goes in hand in hand with how they've changed sports over time with even football with we talked about or you guys talked about this morning on your show uh that fake slide where you you've made everything about offense yep. and scoring only and less defense and things seem like they don't matter anymore and all that matters is rings who can win who can make money how do you score and how do you sell yourself and i think that's that's starting to saturate the market and that also makes the larger markets the bigger place to go so if you're going to go against the argument in those smaller markets how do you compete with that and it makes it almost impossible in my opinion i, I mean it I, makes it really hard. yeah no i think you're hitting on a lot of good things um okay so let's unpack what you kind of just said there because you threw a lot at me. First of all, yeah. I, I think what we're seeing, what we know is, you know, football, you, you have the best quarterback. You probably have the best odds. The only problem is that we know when you got a stout defense, that pretty boy quarterback ain't going to matter, right? Like Patrick Mahomes is phenomenal. If his offensive line can't block, he's going to get his ass kicked in the Super Bowl. And you don't have that in the NBA. Like, you really don't. Like, look, I'm a big LeBron fan. I know that's uh, for a lot of people, they don't like him. I get it. I understand it. I just have liked him since high school. You go back and you look through his career. He's probably going to end with four rings. I don't think they're going to win this year. I, he's year 19 this year. Like, it's not looking great. But you go back through his career. 
Kyrie gets hurt, Kevin Love gets hurt. Like that dude might have won five or six had certain injuries not happened to him while he went to Cleveland the second time. I think what other people also kind of exaggerate is a lot of this is about, for me, it's it's always been about like, when did you establish your fandom? So B-Word is a, a cowboy um, Bulls fan. That obviously occurs from being in the 90s, right? You're at a good age where you understand what's going on. You're following the players and tracking what's going on in the offseason. It, it wasn't that the NBA was, was necessarily better. It was some really great players, some all-time legends. The NBA in the 80s, guys, had two teams for a decade go to the finals. Two. Yeah. You had you had random season where the Houston Rockets upset the Lakers. They get to the finals. They get their ass kicked. They got swept. And then you had the other year where Philadelphia in 83 won it. Every other year in the 80s, except I think 89, when the Pistons came in, it was the Lakers and the Celtics. We always complain in sports nowadays about parity. The NBA, it's the same team. It's always been that. It always has been. The Celtics with Russell. You had the Lakers, the Celtics again. You had Jordan win six in a decade. And some people, I'm not one of them, think that they had not retired. Maybe they win eight in a row. If a player right now won eight in a row, we would bitch and moan about how boring and awful that sport is. But Mike hit a couple things at the right time. He hit the popularity boom of the NBA mixed with he became the first full-blown advertising athlete ever. Yep. He hit a marketing campaign that had never existed and so when me, you, and, 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 and B-Word are watching TV, what are we seeing? It's Gatorade. Shit, I need to drink Gatorade. Mike's drinking it. Like Mike, if I can be like Mike, McDonald's, Nike, like this was a full-blown press attack. And Mike was phenomenal, probably the GOAT. But it also helped that he had that going for him. His teams were no un more unfair than what's going on now. They were stacked. They had Ron Harper as like a fifth option. Dennis Rodman, Horace Grant, Paxson, B.J. Armstrong, it's Scotty freaking Pippen. Like, that team, they had the best international player, Tony Kukoc. Those teams were stacked. They just were stacked differently. Now when the players control it, we hate it. But largely, the NBA was controlled by three teams for almost 20 years. So I, I think the NBA obviously hit a downward there. I, I pushed back on the Iverson thing. I think he's phenomenal. I mean, he's a dude is my height maybe even skinnier than me, and he was out there getting 40. Now, did, was he efficient with it? No. Was he a guy you really want to build around? Probably not. But it was fun to see somebody little defy the odds that much and even get to team to a finals in 2001. But the NBA, let me just make a case for it. It's hard to get back into a league in a sport, but I think if you were to follow the NBA right now, you would notice that they are officiating this game differently. They're starting to kind of creep back into the physicality of the game that a lot of people in the 80s and the 90s like. Now, you're not going to see a Lambeer play. That dude's going to get tossed. He'll get suspended for three games. But you will see James Harden not be able to fool the ref by flopping and flailing his arms out and getting 45 points on 21 free throws. That's not happening this year. So they've cut a lot of that finesse, soft, you know, flopping nature of what the sport has been now for 10 years. They've really made it an, a, a, a key issue to cut that down and make these guys play. You're seeing a lot of players struggle with that. James, Dame, you name it. You've seen a lot of players in this league this year really struggle with the physicality difference in the NBA. So if that's the kind of basketball you like, I would suggest maybe dive into it a little bit and see what you think about it. Because there's really some all-time great players playing right now. Well, that's a good point. And I, I'm happy you... Uh coached B word on his own team that he likes. Cause I'm sure he didn't know any of those. Players. <laughs> um, Cause I, I'm a big LeBron fan too. And I used to joke that he was going to be the greatest of all time. It just depended on what happened with space jam too. And then that atrocity. <laughs> so I was wrong. That um, movie was but, so bad. It was fucking garbage. But yeah. speaking of basketball movies, uh, I want to get into a little entertainment talk guys. Um, top five basketball movies of all time. You can have two honorable mentions. Uh, and Sprague, you don't have to put them in particular order, but you can if you want to. We'll let you start. What are your top five basketball movies, entertainment purpose? Okay, so you you want me to end with the honorable mention because I've got two honorable mention and my top five. You can you begin can, you with can the go first or mention. at the end, whatever you want. Okay, yeah. let's start with honorable mention. Uh, which, by the way, you know, you get honorable mention in high school, you feel like you're still a big deal. Okay, now, number seven. I'm going to bring it out of left field here. I'm going Air Bud. Now. Oh fuck! God damn it! Who is this guy, Jake, and why did we invite him on? 
<laughs> hey, he likes dogs. Hey, you no, should like a dog. Let me let me make a quick pitch. Quick pitch on Airbud. Airbud is a as a acting movie, probably not phenomenal. Although what that dog did was Oscar Oscar worthy. It's a movie about animal abuse, parent <laughs> parent child abuse, never giving up, finding your best friend, and working together as a team to accomplish dreams that nobody sees coming. It is an underrated basketball most, movie. That's the most Portland answer I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> it's weird. I, I picked Ed for a baseball movie, so I feel you, Spray. <laughs> Um, is so that the monkey you. pitching movie? Is What's up? is Ed the monkey pitching movie with uh, yes. yeah with Matt LeBlanc? Matt Adam, LeBlanc, that shitty. I picked that. So, but go it's ahead. not a you monkey, Jake. Your... <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a chi- it's a fucking ape. Oh, an ape. Oh, oh. B word, you're that guy. You're that guy. Oh, I'm that guy. No. I'm that guy. You're that, that guy. guy. I'm that guy. Oh, shit. Okay, number six. Honorable mention before we get into the top five. Uh, Glory Road. Now, this this is worthy of being top five, and I really enjoy it. It's the story of the first all-black starting basketball team in college basketball, and they won the national championship at Texas El Paso. A girls, a woman's coach took over the program. They didn't take him seriously. He got their asses together. It's a really good movie. Number five. All right, let's get to the top five. Number five, basketball is supposed to be fun. This movie is everything you could want in a random off the wall. I can't believe this is a basketball movie, but somehow it is. Number five, Teen Wolf. Yes. Yep. Yes. Teen Wolf. Michael J. Fox is five foot three. When he becomes a wolf, he is five foot three, who has a 75 inch vertical, and he never misses a jump shot. It's phenomenal. I'm all in on Teen Wolf. That's not the only thing that's 75 inches on that wolf. Well, oh my God. <laughs> Red Rocket, bro. Hey, he's got big that, feet, bro. He does have big feet, and he's got large wolf hands. We know what that means. Uh, number four, this is another out of left field for a lot of people. This never gets any love. Uh, I grew up with with just my mom. Didn't have a dad in my life, so I have to admit I'm really soft in a lot of areas, and this is where it's going to expose itself. Number four is Forget Paris with Billy Crystal. He, now, this is a bit of a rom com movie about a love interest he met, and he wants to continue to be with her, but his life, he's an NBA referee. So the movie's kind of centered around his life in the NBA. You've got countless stars like Kareem's in this movie, Reggie Miller's in this movie, and it's Billy fucking Crystal. Like, who doesn't like to watch something with Billy fucking Crystal, right? Right. I agree. Okay, number three, I'm going to go blue chips. you got Shaq and Penny. you got Nick Nolte. You've got some illegal recruiting going on. And you know what? I didn't like the Orlando Magic per se. But I loved watching Penny and Shaq play basketball. So number three is always going to have Blue Chips, a soft spot in my heart. Number two, this used to be my favorite movie. Uh, He Got Game with Ray Allen and Denzel Washington. It is a son longing for a relationship with his father who got sent to prison for murdering his wife in a fit of anger and rage and drunkenness. His son becomes an all-time great. And a fun fact about this movie, it's a Spike Lee joint. Uh, The role was originally set for Kobe Bryant. He didn't want to do it. Ray Allen got it. It ended up working perfectly. Um, And you got some beautiful, beautiful sex scenes in this movie, too. It's underrated. Uh, And number one, white men can't jump. I don't need to explain that one. White white men can't jump has to be number one. I totally disagree with that. But white men can't jump. I I like that movie until halfway through it. It's one of those movies. It's like uh, if I compare it to like a superhero movie like Hancock. The first half of the movie is great, and then all of a sudden it goes to Jeopardy and what the fuck moments. Like, did why, you just compare is... White Man Can't Jump yeah. to Hancock? I am, I am, I'm, I'm comparing it to that. Now, mind you, this is a guy that says draft days in his top five football movies, so everybody can shit on me all they want. What I'm saying is half the movie of White Man Can't Jump is great, and then the other half sucks. Like the movie just goes off on a fucking tangent, like I do on this show sometimes. And I don't know what the hell's happening. That's what I hate about. We that don't, movie. we don't if know it what just the hell's continued happening on that right course. Now. Yeah, we we right. So that's white, white men can't that's jump how is I phenomenal. I, so so since thank you, you guys. So since you're since you're dropping opinions, Jake, I'm going to turn this around on you. What are, <laughs> what what what's your list of movies here? I do like uh, that. Sprague brought up Teen Wolf and Blue Chips are my top two honorable mentions. 
Um, I love Teen Wolf. It's one of my favorite movies, I would say, but I'm not going to put it in my top five. Uh, Blue Chips is there. I remember because I snuck watching that movie because my dad hated Shaq so much. And as like Sprague, I really didn't have a dad in my life as much either. Yeah. Um, I grew up with a midget woman, so I'm a little bit soft, I guess. Hence why maybe maybe I maybe I hardened my shelf more. That's why I'm the hater, because I became <laughs> a fucking crotchety bitch. Uh, but <clears throat> number five for me is Slam Dunk Ernest. You know, I grew up uh, a little white trash and uh, I'm a big <laughs> fan of Ernest and I I love the whole like, you know, put on some shoes. And you're like Michael Jordan, except you're a janitor. So I'm going to put that in there. So wait, did you guys um, really chastise me over Airbud, and then you came with some Ernest for basketball? Yeah. Ernest is better than Airbud, bro. I'll tell you that right I, now. I wow, didn't know this was a podcast of awful takes. I didn't know that's what I was signing up for. <laughs> You know, you know, you're not the first person to say that who's a guest. <laughs> um, number number four for me would be Glory Road. Um, yeah. I love that movie. I went to see it in theaters. I think it's a great story. Really good movie. Number three, number three for me would be Love and Basketball. Love and Basketball is great. Um, I, I love that film. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's got everything I want. It's 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 that perfect movie that you can actually sit and watch your wife for date night. Fulfill your sports urge, fulfill your, you know, you know, what it, like that masculinity behind it. Like it's got everything a movie needs that you can you can accomplish date night and still enjoy yourself and not feel like you just like copped out with a stupid rom com. Um, number two would be he got game. I'm always a fan of that. The only thing I hate about it is when uh, Spike Lee did a terrible job with music choices in that movie. He had some um, odd ones, no doubt. There's some shitty music in that. Like when they're when they're playing and in the music behind it, it sounds like it does not fit at all. It sounds like all of a sudden they put an orchestra there and you're like, where am I? Yeah, he also um, didn't know how to end it. It was a very no. weird like he's in college and he throws a ball and his dad gets it's just an odd ending. Yeah, sort of like white men can't, can't jump. They didn't know how to finish the film. Uh, they won the one goddamn two-on-two two game. They won the money. He needed the money. Uh, that sucks. Uh, number one would be Space Jam. And I think that's just pure nostalgia. And the original with Michael Jordan um, loved everything about it. The only thing I hate is the extended arm. But Bill Murray, which who should have got the winning shot in that. Let's be honest with ourselves here. Bill Murray should have got the winning shot in that film. But uh, that, that this is also the epitome of seeing, a, a as you said, a advert a walking advertisement turn a shitty baseball career back into a basketball career into a moment where you could also make it a successful movie and we followed the journey outside of his his arc and inside of the story arc at the same time and that's that's the other reason I love it so much you have a very shitty list so let's get to the good stuff oh i knew that um <laughs> <laughs> so my honorable mentions um I, so this movie came out just a few years ago and the reason why it's on here and you guys can you guys can get on me all you want for this but the reason why it's on here is because i can watch it whenever it's on and it's not it's not necessarily a movie i crave which is why it's not on my mm. top five but it's definitely an honorable mention and that's uncle drew i thought it was a good storyline i like the fact that it had professional athletes in there um and so the action in it was good, and it was centered around basketball. So there you go. You guys can criticize me for that one. I'm just glad that we all have a really shitty movie on our yes. list that makes no sense to anybody. Yes. So yeah. you and I, have that. you and I, Sprague, we'll have one shitty movie. Jake's got four. So we'll just yes, go. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another honorable mention for me is he got game. Um, I loved it. I just didn't think it was top five worthy. Um, mm -hmm. so you guys did a great job of breaking that down. So I'm not going to get too far into the weeds on that one. Number five, I've got teen wolf, same thing. You yes. guys, you guys discussed that, uh, you know, ad, ad nauseum. So I'm not really going to break that one down, but love that movie. White men can't jump is my number four. So same thing there. Uh, Jake, I've got space jam is number three. So at least your top one ended up in my, uh, in my top five, um, love Space Jam. And again, I think for Jake, it's more nostalgia. Uh, number two, Eddie with Whoopi Goldberg. I love oh, Eddie. Oh, I love that movie. So I almost got Eddie into my honorable mention. It is an underrated film because isn't that the dream? You go to a goddamn yeah. game, you sit in the top section like, hey, you're now the coach. And you're like, cool. That's yeah. the dream scenario at a sporting event. Yeah, I love Eddie. Um, I, I watched that movie over and over and over. I can't tell you how many times I rented it when I was younger. So uh, Eddie's definitely my top two. And my number one, and neither of you guys said this, Coach Carter, Samuel L. Jackson. Coach Carter was our my senior year. It came out, and that ended up being like our bonding night. We had a bonding night, and the coach was like, go see a movie or something. Coach Carter just came out. We went and saw it. I love Coach Carter. 
I just, uh, you know, I, I wanted to have my, my, my list be a little uh, different and controversial. Like, Air Bud is a pretty <laughs> shitty movie, I can fully acknowledge, but I also love dogs, so... Hard to break. You didn't go controversial enough. You have to go as shitty of films as possible. No, 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 no. Like Air Bud also, Three. <laughs> I've never seen Coach Carter. You've, You've never, never seen Coach Carter? Carter? No, maybe I need to watch it. Oh my gosh. You, okay, so it might not be in your top five, <laughs> wow. but it is a good movie. It's a really. It's good not movie. bad. It's a yeah. It's based on a real story of a coach who coaches a shitty team in California, and they turn it around and they lose to a fictitious LeBron James like character. Pretty much. Oh, thanks for the spoiler alert. Well, I mean, you're probably 20 <laughs> years late, so I yeah. know I'm. <laughs> so, so to keep with our to keep with our movies, I have uh, a little quiz for you boys here. So I've got okay. five questions each. We're gonna play a little trivia game, and we're gonna see out of the two of you who's gonna take home the bacon. Are you guys ready for this? I am. I just want to cite before I probably lose this. I'm not great in trivia moments. But it's funny because in my job, people assume I'm going to know every answer to anything connected to sports, and largely I just don't. If any okay. of you, if if either of you guys get a single point, I'll be surprised. But um, wow, I, I at least thought that these were fun facts for at least our basketball theme show here. So, Sprague, you're our guest. I'm going to throw this one at you. Uh, this famous Oscar-winning actor attended St. Mary's, a Division One basketball team, on a basketball scholarship. Do you know who the Oscar winning actor is? Tim Robbins. Incorrect. Mahershala Ali. Damn it. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, St. Mary's. Yeah, in California. Yeah. That's right. So, Jake. Damn it. Zero to zero, zero still. This one to you. This famous rapper attended Alabama State University, you should know who this is, on an athletic scholarship for their for D Division I basketball and played on the basketball team. Without Googling it, Jake, who is the rapper? Two chains. Good job. <clears throat> Two, Two chains. Is this an inside job where you tell Jake the answers to some of these questions before you team up? No. No, I'm it's because he came out with a song, It's Your Birthday or whatever, and I love them strippers, and that doesn't take a lot of Alabama to know how to write a song like that. <laughs> All right, Sprague, this one's for you. This female okay. sportscaster attended Southern New or Southern Louisiana University to play basketball and was inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame in 2012. Who is this woman? Who would know these? Women's sportscaster. Who? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What was the school again? Uh, what did you say? The, what school? The school was Southern Louisiana University. Southern Louisiana University. I don't even know their mascot. Was it Doris Burke? It was not Doris Burke. It was Robin Roberts. God damn it. I thought Robin <laughs> Roberts was a sw I thought she was a swimmer. <laughs> nope. She what do I know? Basketball. Yep. All right, Hater, this one's for you. This Oscar-nominated film star was on the Division I team at Alcorn State. Oscar. Alcorn State? Oscar-nominated? Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what sport did he play? Well, this is a basketball team. Yeah, this is a basketball. <laughs> I don't know. You, you just told me Alabama and it's two chains. I don't know if it's every every uh, everything on this show is basketball related. <laughs> Except the Cowboys. So fuck off. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan. You're a dick cheese. All right, put your Google away. Did you really? Have, did you really get? Up. Did you really get that? Yeah. Holy. All right, by the way. way. <laughs> Sprague, uh, this successful rapper played for the University of Houston on an athletic scholarship prior to his collegiate career ending with an ankle injury. He played basketball for the University of Houston, a rapper. Is he, I don't know. I, and he's famous, you said? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Man, I, uh, I really want to guess Houston, Houston, Houston. God damn it. I really want to guess Slim Thug. You are incorrect. It's Master P. Damn it! Oh, see, I would have said T.I. <laughs> I know it's ATL, but I just figured, you know, the South somewhere. So, Damn. So, 
So Jake, with your hands still up and Google not Make at him your, say, oh, there you go. This, this will lock the win up for you if you get this. Yeah. This Oscar winning actor earned a spot on the junior varsity basketball team at Fordham University. Fordham? Where the hell's Fordham at? Where is that? When we had JV there? and college basketball? That's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's like D-Squad shit. Denzel Washington. I don't know. That's fucking shit. Yes, Denzel Washington. Okay, I'm so good. But we, my hands are up the whole time. We're not. We're not putting in scores here. So, <laughs> so holy uh, shit, dude! You know? This is unbelievable. <laughs> Sprague thinks we're cheating. Now. I do. I, I, I feel like there's some shit going on right now, and you no, guys are like working. Really not. You're like <laughs> testing. Really you're not. testing some beta technology where you can relate answers to one another, and I can't see. What was the that was the best guess I had. All I thought was, I don't know where Fordham is. I know Denzel won an Oscar. Yeah. And he's probably good at basketball. All right. <laughs> so, so, Sprague, I'm going to give this this one to you with a hint. Okay. This game show host earned an athletic scholarship and played basketball for two years at Dury University before leaving to join the Navy. Bitch. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, come on, spray. I'm blanking, bro. Is he okay? So he played two years, you said? He played two years. He's a game show host and bitch. Game show. He's currently a game show host? I I've given you a lot, Sprague. Are you gonna are you gonna guess it or not? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. Steve Harvey? Bob Barker. <laughs> The price is wrong, bitch. God, you know what's funny? I was going black. You had white. I was going black. The whole day. I'm like, who else says bitch? What black no, guy says worry. bitch? All right. B-word for his favorite rap albums one time picked all white rappers and didn't realize I did. it. <laughs> I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it until it was at the end. All right. We've got three more, and then we'll get to the next topic. So, Jake, this all one right. for okay. you. Uh, this famous movie and television actor played basketball at the University of Southern California prior to dropping out to become an actor. Is he white or black? Uh, give me a Sprague hint here. <laughs> He's a human. <laughs> oh, we don't see color, Jake. Well, I, it's not Bob Barker. Southern California? Southern yeah, California. Thank Martin Lawrence. I'm just going to say it. I, I'm way wrong. Incorrect. Tom Selleck. Yeah, yeah I would never. Tom have Selleck. That. Magnum PI. I like it. Yeah. I would never have got that. All right. Sprague, last, last question to you here real quick. This. So Jake oh, has won. Uh, so this question's worth four points, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this, uh, this, the office alum played basketball for Howard University until he made the switch to acting. Well, Howard's an all-black school, correct? So I'm going to go... We don't, see, we don't see color here, Sprague. Knock it off. Well, those colleges do. <laughs> uh, I don't know his name. Stanley. What's the guy's name? The guy who plays Stanley. It's not Stanley. It's not Stanley. Oh, Craig it's Robinson. No, it's not go. Craig Robinson either. Oh, well then... Who, who is, is it? John Krasinski. You don't have to be black to play basketball at Howard University, apparently. Uh, so John Krasinski wow. is at the office. So Jake, you've won. However, if you Jeez. get this answer wrong, you drop down to, to zero points. You ready for this? Last one. I hate you so much. I know. This popular actor earned a basketball scholarship to Ford Scott Community College before dropping out to pursue acting. Man, uh, that really narrows it down. I didn't get an office one. You're naming, you're naming so many off the wall colleges that it's like impossible to really. I know. Grasp. Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> it's not Matthew McConaughey. It's actually Jason. Oh, thank God. I knew I was wrong. Jason Sudeikis. So you both tied. Great job. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Sprague, I really, I really appreciate it when you come onto the podcast and bring the competition you brought. The hey, cake. you didn't allow him I to do. win. And I think that that is very, very good. So I, I, I'm B word. I'm looking right now. I'm going to go through this. I want to know the last time there was a white guy on the Howard basketball team, because I'm telling you right now, I am seeing a lot of black on this roster. It's probably John Krasinski. <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> Speaking of winning Sprague, 
if you had walkout music for winning, what is the best pump up arena music in basketball, in your opinion? Oh man, I I don't know how it's not. Uh, I, I I don't know how it's not the T Pain. All I do is win. It's a perfect song. It makes everybody in the arena feel amazing. The streamers come down. All he's saying, all he wants to do is win, 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 no matter what. And everybody does what? They throw their hands up and they stay there. Come on, man. How do you not get jacked to that song? I feel like you were on a comedy tour at Howard University once and you left. Uh, <laughs> 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 like they booed you off stage. They're like, he's like trying he's so hard. hard. Yeah. And guess what, guys? He, they threw their hands up and they stayed there. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Is that a dad joke or a rap lyric? Yes, it was. Yes, yes, it was. All right, Jake, what about you? Um, I, I'm nostalgic to three songs. The The Bulls intro music, I think, is amazing. Uh, Pump Up the Jams. I like that song. Oh, I, I think it just... fucking hate that song. Yeah, it gets... It, it's just one of those things, though. It's like, you know, if you're in a stadium, it's like, you know, the YMCA, the wedding or whatever, right? You have to play it. Uh, but I, you know, one I wish they would play is the Mortal Kombat theme song at Ooh. basketball games. I, I just wish that, that's such a that song is always stuck in my head, and I just wish some basketball team would take that on because I would be all about that life. Yeah, that's the thing is uh, when is a team going to step into the realm of playing a song that comes out of nowhere? In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, I will change my answer. I'm gonna I'm gonna improvise here. It isn't the TV. They don't do this anymore. I don't think. But I think up until two or three years ago, do you know what Memphis used to do when they would mm-hmm. play a song? They'd play a song, a traditional one, going from the third to the fourth quarter. Do you know what song it was? Whoop that trick. And the entire arena, men and women, <laughs> whoop that trick, would just be rapping that That's song amazing. with their kids. It, was, it's, it really was a, 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 one of the all-time greats in NBA history. And I think they ended up stopping it because people got offended or whatever. Well, yeah, I know. From the course. So um, I was a Bulls fan and I say was because I really I in basketball, I'm very nonpartisan now. But um, Sirius is the name of the song. It is an instrumental by Al- Alan Parsons Project, Jake. That yes. is what the Bulls walked out to. And that is that was the song when I was in middle school that we would play on the boom box when we were when we were going to play basketball. That was the song that we wanted to walk out to. It was badass. It got us pumped up. But the second one that would do that is Jump Around by House of Pain. That's a good one. And I think Jump Around is a good one. It's one of those ones that's not going to get canceled. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it's a fun one. Gets the crowd lively. So those would be my two. Uh, Let me ask you real quick. First of all, Jump Around. I don't know why, but that song, as good as it was on its own, I will always think of Mrs. Doubtfire. The second thing is the Alan Parsons Project. Great intro song. What do you think made that Bulls thing more special, though? The guy doing the voice or the instrumental? I think it – I don't know that you can remove one piece of it and say that that was the thing that made it what it was. I think it was everything from the instrumental in, intro. It was the it was the voice, but it was also the lights. The way that they handled yeah. the lights inside the stadium I think is what – introduced the song or at least created the hype for the song which created the hype for the voice it's kind of like the lady who swallowed the spider to catch the fly i don't know that you can end at one at one particular point other than hey bitch don't swallow the fly and then we're gonna right, go right but um but i think that that one for me from and for pure nostalgic purposes was the most badass intro that i've been able to watch in basketball i don't think anybody's been able to beat it since no the light show really did it for that yeah, yeah. I have one last question for you guys. Okay. And Sprague, I'm going to ask Jake first, but obviously you don't have to be a homer with Portland, but if you want to be a homer with Portland, that's totally fine. Uh, And especially if it's genuine. Okay. But Jake, name your best NBA mascot and name your worst NBA mascot. Oh, the Pelican's the worst. That's creep. That's a creepy fuck. Even though Blaze has herpes from the Portland Trailblazers, I believe that. Mm. He's got cat herpes. Cat um, is want, tough. Yeah, I want to say G Wiz, just because it's it's different, weird. But I, I'm gonna go with the gorilla from the Suns, and I know that's like a cop out, but I think it's because every 
NBA team mascot has tried to emulate how he performs. It's sort of like the uh, Bulls intro. No other mascot can ever do what that mascot has done. Um, and growing up, I mean, I am a Blazer fan, but I used to go to a lot of Phoenix games because, you know, I was born in Arizona and I used to see the gorilla a lot. So I, I'm a fan of that. And I think that was the first one to really open me up. I mean, that was the first mascot I wanted his collector's card. And so um, I'm going to go with the gorilla from Suns. Hmm. All right. That's a pretty good one. Uh, the Pelican, by the way, I think they ended up getting rid of it. It was too creepy. It was scaring the shit out of all the little kids that it would come say hi to. Uh, the, the worst one, and, and this is not like me just doing the local thing. The Blaze the Trail Cat is awful. Yeah. I, I don't know who approved that. I don't know who thought, you know, we're the Trailblazers. What do we need to do? Let's do a Trail Cat. What? That made no sense. It still doesn't make sense. Uh, I think it's, I hated it when it was created. I hate it today. The best one that, that is in the NBA actually isn't in the NBA until they bring the team back. The Seattle Supersonics had the best mascot. Yes, yes. It was uh, Squatch, and he would he, – I mean, he, this dude was – those little, like, uh, sleds you would take down a hill. He was going down the, you know, the sections down the stairs onto the court with those. Like, that That dude was the gr- – he was the GOAT, and unfortunately, he's in hiatus right now. But when they bring that team back, they'll go back to having the best mascot. Sprague, I totally agree with you there. That that was actually my best mascot for for an inactive one. I thought Squatch was awesome. Um, for yeah. the active one, I've got to be a little homery here. And again, not my team anymore. Completely nostalgic. But Benny the Bull, I just, I've always liked the Bull. However, the worst mascot, I think, is Stuff the Magic Dragon from the Orlando Magic. <laughs> you think, don't like him? No. he, he No. I, I, I want to punch him in the face. <laughs> and then if there's an, if there's an honorable mention wow. of, of a bad mascot, I'm going to say Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson is a terrible mascot <laughs> for the LA Lakers. Uh, Spike Lee comes in a close third uh, for the Knicks, yeah. but yeah, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite things I looked up is when we was, when we were preparing for the show is the mascot list is uh, on every list the triangle for the Knicks was a na- was was put on the list as a mascot, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And it's you know it's one of those things like Fox Sports had it on their list, ESPN had it on their list, and it's just some jackass who's writing going, oh, I'm going to be clever and write this up, even though Puff did finish better than that B word, so that tells you you suck. Yeah, I think that's that's B word's worst take of the podcast so far is that. <laughs> The Orlando look because here's the other thing. Do you like the Philly fanatic? Ah, uh, not yep. really. Not really. Okay, so if, if you like that, you can't like the Philly fanatic and then hate the Orlando Magic. They're cousins. I I don't care. The the stuff the Magic Dragon is just the stupidest damn name for a mascot. Number one. Number two. He looks like an absolute like Muppet douchebag. Like I'm just no. I'm st- stuff the magic dragon can stuff his tail in his ass. That's he, all he, I hey, he, sm- he smokes weed. And if you're not down with that, then that's your fault. Um, <laughs> my honorable mention, but that's live. I'm going to go the Hornet. I think the Hornet in Charlotte's pretty badass. I've always liked the Hornet. Yeah. Yeah. That, that reminds me of that nineties nostalgia. Yeah. Like, you know, everybody had that, uh, that starter, the jacket. starter jacket, like, man. And- yep, no, the starter jacket with the pockets in the front. Cause yep. like the one thing I lo- I miss about uh, teams was the turquoise and purple color. Like mm-hmm. every team coming out in the nineties had that, the diamondbacks, uh, the Raptors originally were those colors. If I, yep. if you don't get me wrong, the Grizzlies um, had it when they were in Vancouver, yep, Grizzlies yeah. had it. And so I, I miss, I miss that color scheme. I think we need to bring that back to with the diamonds and everything. I think that was, that was a cool look. That was good. Well, Sprague, let us know. So for our viewers who aren't familiar with you and what you do, um, yeah. kind of tell us a little bit about how we can find you socials, uh, where to catch your shows, all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m. on 1080 The Fan uh, in Portland. You can listen through the Odyssey app. You can listen on the radio. We have an HD2 signal, uh, you know, all that bullshit. And then you can also, uh, I do Jack Ramsey's, which is the Blazer podcast we talked about at the beginning of the pod. You can find that on YouTube. Just type Jack Ramsey's. You can subscribe, rate, review to that. Uh, and then just find me on social media with at Brandon Sprague. That's, you know, it's really that simple. Perfect. Well, thank you for coming on. Um, I always love it when people, especially guests that he invites, put Jake in his place, and it just makes me so happy. So uh, you're welcome on anytime. Uh, you can always <laughs> hate on the hater with me. I, I truly appreciate that. And uh, thanks for coming on again. No, thank you for the invite. It's always fun to bust Jake's chops. Uh, Jake will never tell you the story about him coming to a fantasy football drafting and fucking housed. 
and uh, telling me his life story, which was a great night. We ended up getting out of that bar pretty late. Um, but it, yeah, thank you for inviting me to the podcast. Anytime you want to deal with this Alabama roll tide, motherfucker, you let me know and I'll hop on. <laughs> Oh, and fuck the Cowboys. I don't want you to feel too comfortable. Fuck the Cowboys. Uh, Yeah, but I hear it from everybody, Sprague. So so I'll just, I'll accept that. I won't look you in the eye when you tell me that, but I'll accept that. I'll keep my my nose down here. Top five regular season, top five regular season moment in NFL history. Terrell Owens on the star. Fuck you guys. We're better than you. Yeah, I would agree. Even as a Cowboys fan, I would agree. I think that that is the epitome of, of taking a quality shit on another team. And so I mean, it's I'm a great, it's a great rivalry, right? When the Cowboys yeah. and Niners play it, it means something for a lot of people. Yeah. So. No, I agree. Well, with that, Jake, what do you got for me? Thanks for all the dirty talk. Come back and get sanitized. 